Hi my loves, so today I'm going to be doing a book haul video and this is new for me, I've never done a video like this before. If you guys saw my last video, I mentioned how I'm rebranding my channel a little bit, so I'm going to be adding a little bit more lifestyle videos into my channel. So I have a few books here, I have four books actually, so I'm just going to get right in to the books and let you know what books they are and how I like them. Alright love, so this is the first book that I have here. It's called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing. And this book is by Marie Kondo or Kundo. I'm not sure. I think it might be pronounced Kundo because it sounds more Japanese. Um, and this is a number one in New York Times bestseller with over 3 million copies sold, which is, has to say something about the book. Um, I've already read a chapter of this book already. And I just wanted to go into one of the sections just to give you an idea of what this book is about. And the first chapter is called Why I Can't Keep My House in Order. And I'm just going to go to the page that I was on. Okay, I think this is it right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go into this section of the book here. This is called Tidy a Little a Day and You'll Be Tidying Forever. So I'm gonna read one to two paragraphs of what this page says. So it starts off, if you tidy your house all at once, you'll rebound. It's better to make it a habit to do a little at a time. Although this advice sounds very tempting, we've already seen that the first part is wrong. How about the suggestion that we should do only a little a day? Although it sounds convincing, don't be fooled. The reason you never seem to finish is precisely because you tidy a little at a, little at a time. Changing lifestyle habits acquired over a span of many years is generally extremely difficult. If you have never succeeded in staying tidy to date, you will find it ne next to impossible to develop the habit of tidying a little at a time. People don't change their habits without first changing the way of their thinking. And that's not easy. After all, it's quite hard to control what we think. There is, however, one way to drastically transform the way we think about tidying. So that is uh, two paragraphs from that page and I've been really really liking so far it's definitely a different way of thinking about how you tidy up and it, I've actually implemented a couple of the ideas or techniques into my day today um, I just started reading it last night so <laughs> but yeah um, I'm really really interested to find out what this book has to offer I actually asked the cashier um, when I was purchasing the book if she liked it and she said that it was really it's a different book um, she doesn't incorporate every little thing that is stated in the book but it's definitely helped her sort of tidy up her mind and tidy up the way that she looks at cleaning because honestly it's so true when you have a clean room and there's no clutter and there's no mess in your surroundings you are often more peaceful you're often more oh my god I can't speak you're often more at ease and you find that yourself not stressed as much and I completely agree when I'm in a more clean environment I definitely am more relaxed so I'm really excited to um, finish reading this book if you guys want a closer look this is what it looks like yeah so I'm excited to um, finish reading this I'll definitely guys give you guys an update on this when I'm done okay so this is the book from just like candy the sweet life and I've actually read quite a few chapters of this already I think about I'm about a quarter to halfway through okay so I'm gonna read a little bit of this part of the chapter this part in particular was when she was in high school and she was dealing with her first heartbreak from a boy of course and um, I'm just gonna get started and read this so it starts off my mom was in the kitchen when I got home. I didn't want to explain my tear-streaked, puffy face, so I bolted to the bedroom and locked the door. I had no idea what to do with myself. I'd seen movies and TV shows where characters were emotionally distraught, would take pills to stop the pain. The only pills I could find were a dozen Tylenol, so I swallowed them all. I'm not sure what I expected to happen, but the pills didn't make me feel any better. They did, however, turn into a coping mechanism. Whenever I felt ugly, desperate, or low, I would console myself with a handful of pills, and it was my little it was my little secret, my personal escape from the pain. Although taking too much Tylenol is super dangerous and has been shown to cause liver damage, I was lucky enough to escape the ill effects. But I did come to rely on the sense of control the pills offered to get me through the next four years. I couldn't control what others thought of me, and I certainly couldn't make myself into a different person, taking... 
I couldn't make myself into a different person. Taking the pills was the only thing I knew I could do to give myself a feeling of control. And, um, yeah, that part of the book was probably one of my favorites so far. I really love how she incorporated her personal life into this book. I went through that a bit when I posted, um, a photo of it onto my Instagram. And she actually commented on the photo, which was really, really nice of her, saying thank you for buying it and all that good stuff. But, um, I honestly got emotional with a few things that were in the book that she stated, um because some of the things I can relate to personally and um, it's just it's nice to see her go through her struggle and come out as a really really strong person that is a role model for many young girls so definitely if you guys have the chance to pick up this book The Sweet Life from Dulce Candy definitely give it a go I'm really liking it so far all right so the next book that I have is The Alchemist and I picked this up on a recommendation from one of my friends I actually have not looked at this book or opened it at all since I purchased it I'm just trying to get through the other ones that I have first. And um, this book is by Paulo Coelho. And this is supposed to be some sort of like a life-changing book, I guess. Um, I haven't read any of it, so I'm going to go into it and read, I guess, the first paragraph. Let's find it. Okay, so I just picked a random page in the middle of the book to read from. I don't think this goes in chapters because it just said part one at the beginning of the book. So I'm just going to read it. Um, I know that there are religious things in this book. So if you do not practice any religion, I don't really practice any religion, but um, I don't mind reading it. Like I don't take offense to any religion. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd get, I, could, I would put that out there. But um, anyway, so I'm just going to read this and it says... There are a lot of different people here, and each has his own God, but the only God I serve is Allah, and in his name I swear that I will do everything possible once again to win out over the des desert, but I want each and every one of you to swear by the God you believe in that you will follow my orders no matter what. In the, in the desert, disobedience means death. There was a murmur from the crowd, each was swearing quietly to his or her own God, the boy swore to Jesus Christ, the Englishman, said nothing, and the murmur lasted longer than a simple vow would have. The people were so also praying to heaven for protection. A long note was sounded on a bungle, and everyone mounted up. The boy and the Englishman had bought camels and climbed uncertain, uncertainly onto their backs. The boy felt sorry for the Englishman's camel, loaded down as he was with the cases of books. There's no such thing... There's no such thing as coincidence, said the Engl Englishman, picking up the conversation where it had been interrupted in the warehouse. I'm here because a friend of mine heard of an Arab who... Um, so I'm just going to leave it there. This seems pretty interesting to me. I didn't know... I didn't know what to expect when I was picking up this book, but I know of a few people that have said that this book is amazing and everybody should read it. And I know Paulo... Coelho is a very, very respected author, and I love to read many different genres of books, so I'm really excited to um, dive into this one, definitely. So if you guys have read The Alchemist, please let me know in the comment what you guys thought about it. Um, I'm not one to read too much into religion, but like I said, I don't really follow or practice any religion at the moment, nor have I really ever. I was raised Catholic, but um, not that I should be going into this, but yeah, I was raised Catholic, but I've never really, um, I've never really practiced, um, my religion growing up, so, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of leave it there, um, but anyways, if you guys have read it, just let me know in a comment, I'd love to discuss the book with you guys, and the last one that I have is an actual, isn't an actual book per se, but I picked up a Laura Vitale's cookbook that she recently published, and I'm so glad that I did, because I actually made one of the recipes last night, and it came out super good, so, um, yeah, it's just her... Uh, Laura in the Kitchen, favorite Italian-American recipe recipes made easy. Wow, I can't talk. So I'm super happy that I picked up this book. I'm going to try and show you guys, um, like, everything is just so detailed. Very minimal um, ingredients in each recipe, which is so nice. Like, look at this pasta. It looks so freaking good. Okay. And I'm going to show you guys the recipe that I made last night. Because I could find it. I think it's here. Yeah, right here. 
these Greek meatballs in a pita. So good. Um, there's a little bit more um, ingredients than most because most of these are spices, which everybody mostly has. They turned out so good. I'm so glad that I picked up this book. You guys need to pick it up. If you guys are beginners with cooking, this is definitely a cookbook that I recommend. Ooh, I didn't see these. Ooh, there's mocha meringues. Those look so yummy. Oh my god, I'm going to make those one day. And there's also desserts, which is so nice. And there's like breakfast ideas, like one pan breakfast. I didn't even see this. Oh my god, so yummy. Okay, I can't wait to try out more of these recipes. And once I get the chance to, I might incorporate cooking into my channel. Not promising anything. I do love to cook for anybody that knows me and baking as well too. So maybe I'll incorporate some of those videos in the future. But... If you guys were thinking about picking this up, I definitely recommend it. She's so beautiful. Like, I love her. She's so, like, full of joy. And you can tell that she loves what she does. So, um, yeah. I'm so glad that I picked this up. And I can't wait to definitely make more of the recipes that are in here. All right, love. So, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I know this is a little bit new for me. So, if you guys liked it, please let me know and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, please let me know. And I will not make these videos anymore. Um, or these types of videos anymore. <laughs> I'm not going to stop making videos. Um, but yeah, anyways, so if you guys liked it, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys have any book re recommendations for me to pick up in the future. I definitely would love to read them. And subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video. I love you so much. Thank you for watching. Mwah. Bye. Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a what's in my bag video. I told you guys when I did my unboxing of my bag, I was going to do a what's in my bag once I accumulated a little bit of stuff into it. So the bag that I'm going to be showing you guys is my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier in the size 30. 